How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about vampire power, which is the electricity your electronic stuff uses even when it's turned off. So it consumes this electricity 24-7, 365 days a week. And you can imagine, even a little bit of this electricity usage adds up to be a lot by the end of the year. Now I have one of these called a kilowatt. It plugs into the wall and then you plug your device in here and it'll let you know how much power it's consuming. Just turn the device off, plug it in and see if it's consuming anything. Now vampire power I consider kind of like a level two type of thing because it's not gonna give you as much gains as changing light bulbs uh, from incandescent to CFLs and CFLs to LEDs. And now I came to the conclusion in another video that you should basically change your light bulb from a CFL to an LED if the LED light bulb's about two or three dollars. If you want to know the details, I'll leave a link to that video over here. Basically, there's other stuff that you can do that would significantly reduce your electricity compared to this vampire stuff. So if you already did all of those level one stuff, then you would come to this vampire power stuff and reduce it a little bit more. Now you can have this thing plug everything in and go, oh, this is consuming a watt, this is 10 watts or whatever, but you need to have a good idea of how much it is it's costing you every single year. Around here, it costs about 11 cents per kilowatt hour, which means using 1000 watt for one hour. A lot of times things won't actually use a thousand watts. Usually it's stuff like heater that actually uses a thousand watts. So if you turn on a one kilowatt heater for about one hour, you're going to spend about 11 cents in electricity. So it's important to figure out how much does it really cost you to run about one watt of vampire power for some device for a whole year. So we can just convert one watt to kilowatt by dividing up by a thousand times 24 hours in a day times 365 days in a year. And then we multiply that by 11 cents. All of that comes out to 96 cents a year. So what that tells you is when you plug some device in with everything turned off and it's still consuming power, every single watt that it's consuming, it's gonna cost you $1 by the end of the year. The thing that annoys me most about vampire power is that it's not doing anything. If you let it sit there, it's just a drain on your electricity and on your wallet. A dollar for every watt of vampire power that it's consuming. There are useful vampire power though, because when you plug in your TV, it's using some vampire power to keep the electronics active so that when you push the remote button, it's going to sense that. Because if you don't have this vampire power, then you have to walk all the way to the TV every single time and turn a switch or something, which is what people actually used to do. They actually have to walk to the TV and flip a switch to turn it on. So with this in mind, you can take this and plug various things into it. Another example is if you have the device turned off and it still says 10 watts, it means it's roughly gonna cost you about $1 per month to pay for the vampire power on that device. That's quite a lot considering electricity bill may be 30, 50, $100 a month. That's a good percentage for that single item that you have to pay for. You can actually get away with not buying this kilowatt measurement device thing if you actually have a smart meter attached to wherever you live. The way to use this meter is if you go outside and look at it, it's gonna cycle around to how much actually watts that you're currently using. Now you need the place to be kind of idle where people are not turning things on and off and then the fridge going on and off all the time. So you need things to be sort of idle. Now you, what you do is take a reading outside and look at the baseline. And then you run back into the place, you unplug something that's consuming the standby power and then you go back outside and take a reading again. Now if nothing else turned on or off at that time, whatever amount it reduces by is your standby power. Of course this is good for doing a few device, but if you have more than a few device, it's good to get one of these because you can just plug it in and read it and it'll save you some time. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'll leave a link down below in the video description. 